Hi all, in this video, I'm going to talk about the second part of Learning Unit 5, which is the minor food components, or also known as vitamin. Okay, at the end of the second part of Learning Unit 5, students should be able to define vitamin, classify vitamin, and give examples of food containing each type of vitamin and also examples of each vitamin deficiency. So what is the definition of vitamin? So vitamin is an organic compound required for life that cannot be synthesized by mammalian organism in sufficient quantities and it must be supplied by diet. And usually, these vitamins are needed in small quantities only. And they are all are coenzyme or cofactors, and their function um, in a wide variety of capacities within the body as cofactors for lots of enzymatic reactions. So, vitamin function as coenzyme. So what is the function of coenzyme? So a coenzyme prepares the active sites for catalytic activity. If you look at these uh, active sites, and then we have coenzyme. So this coenzyme is actually a vitamin. Lah. And then uh, it prepares the active site for catalytic activity. So whenever the substrate comes, it will bind with the um, active site. And we result in products and also side products. Okay, in terms of classification, vitamins can be divided into two categories. The first one is fat soluble vitamin, which is vitamin A, D, E, K. So we have learned this uh, since from, I think, uh, primary school, so we know that fat soluble is usually adet. And then, water soluble vitamin is other than adet, which is B and C. Okay, for non-B complex, it is also known as vitamin C. While vitamin B or vitamin B complex can be subdivided into two different types. Uh, the first one is the energy releasing B complex, which is thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, pyridoxin, biotin, and also pentotenic acid. Another subgroup of vitamin B complex is hematopoietic, which is um, including folic acid and vitamin B12. If we look at this table 9.1 here, uh, this table actually shows the stability of vitamins under different conditions. And if you look at the parameters here, we have UV light, heat, oxygen, acid, base, and metals. Yeah? There are six parameters here, uh, which we would like to test the stability of these vitamins. For example, vitamin A. Okay, vitamin A, it is sensitive to light and it is sensitive to oxygen it is sensitive to acid and it is also sensitive to metal so how do we preserve vitamin a is we should preserve in dark and seal uh, packaging with good uh, with good stability yeah? because we know that it is easily destroyed by light oxygen acid and metal, so we need to store it in a dark bottle. And it is should be sealed because it will be affected by oxygen if it is not sealed. Okay, uh, vitamin D for example, uh, destroyed easily by all, uh, by most of the parameters except base. So, uh, how to store it? It should be stored in a bottle that is dark, cool, and also sealed. Okay, if we look at the vitamin E, the tocopherol, uh, vitamin E is sensitive to heat, oxygen, acid, base, and also 
metal. So how to store vitamin E? It should be stored in a bottle or packaging that is cool, neutral pH and also good stability. So for vitamin E, you do not have to store in a dark bottle because it is not sensitive to light. Okay, so these uh, three are, are the condition uh, which shows that um, some types of vitamins are sensitive to what types of uh, par parameter and how do we store the product also how do we store the vitamin is depend on the sta uh, stability of the vitamin itself okay so the rest you can um, look from this table and relate it with uh, how you can store the vitamins Okay, uh, let's talk about water-soluble vitamins. So, water-soluble vitamins are soluble in aqueous solution because it is water-soluble, right? So, it must be soluble in aqueous solutions. And it is always used as cofactors by many enzymes. Okay, uh, the first example here, if we have thiamine, vitamin B1, which is a water-soluble vitamins. Uh, the function is for decarboxylation in our body. It is used to do uh, decarboxylation. You know, uh, in our body, we have um, many, many types of reaction. And these uh, reactions are usually um, assist by enzyme. And this enzyme need cofactors. So these cofactors comes from the vitamin that we consume and if you look here ascorbic acid is very good in collagen synthesis healing of wood so that's why uh, nowadays uh, people are crazy about the vitamin c because it can help um, syn uh, the synthesis of collagen in our body but please bear in mind uh, do not consume it overdose then what we should eat every day eh? because uh, overdose of uh, vitamin C can also cause burden to our liver. Okay, and then um, another types of vitamin which is the fat soluble vitamin. So fat soluble vitamins including vitamin A, D, E and K. It is soluble in lipids but not in aqueous solution. Meaning if you add vitamin E and then uh, you mix it with water, it will give you two different layers because this vitamin E does not dissolve in um, water. So it will give you two distinct layers. The, the upper one is the vitamin E layer and the bottom one is the um, water layer. So these uh, fat-soluble vitamins, they are important in uh, vision, bone formation, antioxidant, and blood clotting. Yeah? Okay, and they are stored in the body. Okay, these are the example of the functions of um, the following fat-soluble vitamins. So vitamin A can be uh, can assist formation of visual pigments okay you we always heard that people say uh, I'm not sure about you but since I was a child my mother always say that uh, eat carrot carrot is good for your sight meaning that uh, carrot contains a lot of beta carotene which is also uh, a vitamin A and it is very good for the de development of epithelial cells Another fat soluble vitamin is vitamin D. So this vitamin uh, facilitates the absorption of calcium and phosphate and it helps uh, deposition of calcium and phosphate in bone. Usually when you are buying this uh, calcium uh, calcium tablet or calcium supplement, it always comes with vitamin D and calcium because this vitamin D will have the absorption of calcium. 
Another fat soluble vitamin is vitamin E. So vitamin E serves as an antioxidant and it prevents oxidation of vitamin A and also unsaturated fatty acid. Okay, and then we have a vitamin K. So vitamin K is good to synthesize prothrombin for blood clotting. Meaning if we if we have um uh, if we are lacking of vitamin K, then it cannot help the synthesis of this um, compound for blood clotting. Yeah? So in case if we are involved in accident, so if we do not have uh, enough uh, sufficient vitamin K, so protonin cannot be synthesized, and then it will take quite a lot of time for blood to clot and cause a huge blood loss yeah okay so this is um, the structure of vitamin a okay uh, vitamin a uh, if you look at the vitamin a it has how many five five conjugated double bond yeah and then um, here r is uh, represented by uh, coch3 or acetate and also it can be replaced by Omitted. So, if you look at the fruits that contain vitamin A, for example, like carrots and papaya, because they are orange, and normally vitamin A is uh, can be obtained from orange or red colored fruits. Eh? fruits. Okay, uh, synthetic vitamin A can also be made as acetate or palmitate and marketed commercially in the form of oil solution, stabilized powder, or aqueous emulsions. The compounds are insoluble in water but soluble in fat, oils, and also fat solvents. Vitamin A can only be found in animal and highest level of vitamin A are found in certain fish liver oils such as cod and tuna. And other important sources are mammalian liver, egg yolk, milk, and also milk products. So the levels of vitamin A and its provitamin carotene in some food are listed in the next table. So if we look at this table, um, these are uh, this is the list where you can find uh, the source of uh, vitamin A and carotene. For example, uh, beef, grilled beef contain 37 IU over 100 gram. Okay, uh, and it has 0 0.04 milligram of carotene. And then if we look at the list here, it shows that uh, the highest carotene can be found in Broccoli and also spinach. Yeah, spinach. Spinach has the highest carotene, which is, I think it could be the red spinach that has uh, this higher percentage of carotene. Okay, uh, vitamin A, or also known as beta carotene, it occurs widely in plant products and has a high vitamin A activity. So in theory, one molecule of beta carotene would yield two molecules of vitamin A. Okay, so vitamin A is actually made of two molecules of uh, beta carotene. So the enzyme dioxygenase is able to cleave beta carotene molecule symmetrically to produce two molecules of vitamin A. Then after the cleavage of the beta carotene, the first reaction product is retinol which is used to uh, reduce to retinol. Okay, so this is the beta carotene. After the cleavage, you see there, there are quite a number of disconnections here. So when you disconnect at this uh, 15, at the bone 15 here, so you will get uh, this compound. Okay, when you cut it here, 
you will get another compound. If you cut it here, you will get this compound. And then if you cut it, cut at it, you will get this portion. Okay. And then these are all different forms of retinal. Depends on where the disconnection is. And then the retinal will now be converted to retinol. Okay. Uh, vitamin A is relatively stable to heat in the absence of oxygen. But because of the highly unsaturated character of the molecule, it is quite susceptible to oxidation, especially under the influence of light. And vitamin A is also unstable in the presence of mineral acids, but stable in alkali. And vitamin A that is added to milk is more easily destroyed by light and the form in which vitamin A is added to the food product may influence its stability. So vitamin A in bitlet form is more stable than that added as a solution in oil. And the bitlets are stabilized by a protective coating. If this coating is damaged by water, the stability of the vitamin is greatly reduced. That's why um, if you compare from uh, if you compare vitamin A in bitlet form, it is more stable than the oil form because it has a protective coating. Okay, so this protective coating make uh, the vitamin E more stable. Okay. Because the one that is added in uh, oil form does not have a protective coating. But however, if this protective coating is damaged by water, um, so the vitamin is also will also become unstable. Okay, uh, that's the end of this video. I will continue on the vitamin D in the next video.